Hey folks, welcome back to Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. Um, we are here in Brightstone Cove, Seldora. In the last episode, we uh, made our way down to the bottom, explored a variety of paths, got a variety of items. In this episode, we're doing very much a similar thing. Um, one, to grab items that were on different paths from the one I took last time, and two, to grab items that I just kind of stupidly overlooked. Um, for this episode, we are going to start out by uh, heading down these stairs here, rather than jumping across that chasm. Just to uh, spice things up a little bit, and also grab some items. And like this, right here. Don't mind me, Mr. Spider, I'm just gonna grab this, uh, this soul. You can have the body. I'm sure you're hungry. Uh, now, I'm gonna be... Uh, using a torch quite a bit in this, uh, at least this first intro area, so I'm gonna put my crossbow. That way I have a one-handed ranged option. I think I referred to these guys, uh, as, like, magicians in the last episode. Really, they're more priests. If you look at their garb, they have kind of Pope hat-looking things. No, Mr. Spider, don't! Luckily, even if you attack them, they don't become aggressive, so that's nice. Anyway, um, so the other way to get across this chasm, rather than just jumping, is you can grab this rope uh, and slide down, uh, which you won't take fall damage for, which is nice, but you do have to deal directly with this enemy, which is less nice. a funny looking pose. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I'm actually going to drop down over here. Easily overlooked platform. And we'll find in here two more priests. Now this is a path that I did not know existed. I suspect it existed, but I did not know it existed for quite a long time. Um, because this is the path that leads to that bonfire we saw kind of locked or uh, put behind bars in the last episode. And where? What is? I'm trying to think of what room that is. I don't know. Um, anyway, this is this is a very easily missable bonfire. You'll see it. It'll taunt you, but you know won't exactly know how to get there. Um, and it was not until I looked it up right before, uh, right before making this video that I actually found out how to get there. And even then I had to watch the video a couple times. Um, excuse me, guys, I am opening this door. Um, so now we have a bonfire at the bottom of Brightstone Cove Seldora, as well as the top, which, uh, is, is convenient if you are trying to grab stuff at the bottom. I am actually going to climb back up because I want to approach some of the enemies in that room from up above rather than on the floor. On the floor I have to kind of navigate around spiders, and even if they're not aggressive, they do get in the way. Uh, let's see, there's that guy there, that item there that I do need to grab at some point. Oh, really? You can reach me up here? Boo. Alright, well, let's take care of... Mm. Yeah, these guys with their homing spells, they're really annoying. And the, uh, the thing about these homing spells is, I don't know if they have a range or a timer or what, but I swear they have followed me to the ends of the earth. Um, very annoying. And I'm going to snipe you. Now, the eagle-eyed among you might notice something down there that I don't think we saw last time. I'll bet it was there, but it despawned um, before we could actually look at it. There is a red... There is a red crystal lizard. I'm gonna have to do something about that. Um, there's that item there, but I would need to climb up even higher in order to grab it. And I 
don't know if it's worth it. However, um, what's inside the building is... Oh, no. Well, okay. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to be doing another round. Whatever. Let's go grab that crystal lizard thing. I think this is the first crystal lizard we've encountered that is red. I forget if I added the adjective red when I was saying that because I have horrible memory. Um, they don't drop titanite or anything. They breathe fire, I think. They're weird. Kind of a weird place to, to have it, to be honest. Um, excuse me, spiders. I'm just going to light this torch so that you won't attack me. Um, and now what I'm hoping for, what I'm fishing for here, is an invasion. Last time we were here, we were invaded by uh, that bow, crossbow dude. Um, but there's also a forlorn invasion here that can happen. I don't know what causes it. I don't know what starts it. I'd like to have it happen, but I don't know if it will. Um, oh well, let's just, you know what we can do? We can, uh, we can just warp back up to the top, descend back down, we'll have to deal with those jerks again. Oh, it's because there are spiders around, huh? I'm, I'm sorry guys. There's one more, okay. Oh, and there's another. So many spiders. All right, let's port back to the middle here and descend again. All right, um. Doo -doo. So this time, I am going to, uh, to ride across. Like this. And then we can drop on down here, drop on down here. These are explosive. Um, and we can drop down on here. And inside here is a very valuable item, an Estus Flask Shard. Okay, Forlorn, now is your chance to invade. Now's the time. I'm gonna do a quick run back and forth here. Well, I don't think it's coming. So, all right. Let's warp back up one more time. Oh my god, I hate that. Fine, I'll use the homeward bone. Oh, we're here. I thought that would warp me <laughs> to the to the bonfire I spawned at, but I guess not. Okay, well, whatever. Alright, playing that torch once again. We're almost done with all these silly runs down, but there's still a little bit more that uh, I'd like to show off. Alright, so I remember here, Creighton's still hanging out, he's not doing much. Um, we haven't uh, raided his supply. He gave us our key, or gave us his key, and we haven't opened that up yet. And then, ah, uh, come on over, come on over here. Um, so yeah, the the hybrids are not dissuaded by fire, as you as you can see there. 
rude. Well, that's nice. Okay, I forgive you. And now, what we didn't do before, we can drop down here. And there is another room. And here's a fun thing. You can completely bypass the room if you want. This will lead you to the other side. <laughs> Just for fun. Um, so there's a nasty trick. They're kind of hanging out on the ground, looking like regular spiders. There's one regular spider and two hybrids. Alright, light that torch or sconce there. Hey, thanks for showing that off, buddy. This lever. Lower that chest there. That you can't walk to, you have to jump. Southern Ritual Band plus one. I don't know if we've encountered the regular Southern Ritual Band, but it uh, allow allows more attunement slots. One of the secret treasures restored in Aldia. This modest looking ring contains very powerful magic. To imagine what unspeakable deeds were performed to create such rings, one need only recall the cruel fate of the residents of Aldia. We will be learning much more about Aldia as the game progresses, but that does not bode well for for them, them Aldians. Anyway, that is a room that we've explored thoroughly. This is a room that we have not. Now, are there going to be rogue spiders here? Genuinely don't remember. I like these these kind of benches strewn around. It makes it look like it was at least somewhat inhabited at one point. Don't know what's up with these basilisks. Weirdos is what they are. Anyway, we got a couple doors we can investigate. Got this one here. Has a poor skeleton in there. Not much. Got this door here that is too heavy to open. You can see there's some sand kind of flowing out from under it. Um, so if you want to open this, be prepared to take some damage. You can break open the door, but it'll all just kind of gush out at you and, uh, and take a little bit of damage. Not a ton, but if you're on your last legs, it's enough to be bothersome. And now we can use that Seldora Den key to, uh, to get some wonderful prizes from Creighton's stash. Engraved gauntlets. Check it out here. Okay. Stone gauntlets engraved with odd writing, said to bring good fortune to the wearer. The wealthy merchant Fiorenza searched for these rare and precious gauntlets his entire life, but was not the one who found them. Huh. Never heard of Fiorenza before, but... <laughs> um... Anyway, normal attacks can become critical hits sometimes. It's... I don't, I don't know the numbers on that, but given that I don't hear about it very often, I'm guessing it's not that great. Anyway, this chest, as I'm sure that message is telling us, is a trap. It's got a grenade. Rude. Um, so I think whether you let Pate or Creighton win, uh, the survivor will give that same line. Oh good, some rusted coins, wonderful. Yeah, that's that's a good message. 
I was honestly trying to read the message, but opened it instead. Oh, and there's that door there. Oh. I can't, I can't leave that stone unturned. I gotta go get it. I wonder if I can. I wonder if this is it, actually. This might just be it. Yeah, it is. Ah, cool. Grab that. Some Titanite. Um, let's smash these. More torches. Good. I've been using torch time, and I do want to maintain some. Hey, stop that. Um, and that wraps up my investigation um, for this episode. In the next episode, I'll be heading out this way, re-entering that chapel there. Or maybe it's a different chapel. I'm not sure. I think it's a different one, actually. Entering into that building there, and we will, uh, almost 100% sure we will be fighting the boss of Brightstone Cove, Seldora. Um, but for that, let's return back to the bonfire. And in the next episode, we'll be finishing off this area. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all next time.